Today we will be talking about how to use muriatic acid to clean aluminum off of a iron cylinder. Now by no, no means am I a professional, so this is do at your own risk. I may even be taking steps which are not advised but this is the process that I'm going to use and walk you through about how to recover the damage done to the inside of a cylinder when you experience a soft seize. I'll try to get a good view here for you. Okay, so you can see down there, you see those streaks? That's the actual aluminum. So the great thing about this kit is that it's a iron kit and the piston itself is aluminum, piston and rings. What does that mean? Well, one metal is stronger than the other in the, in the fact that uh, when it heated up, the aluminum fused to the iron. But I can use the acid that won't react to the iron, but it will eat away the aluminum, which is the piston here. You can also see the head. I'm going to clean this up. You can see there's some a buildup on there. Acid. Oh, and here it is. Uh, I got this at Lowe's, approximately eight dollars. Um, here you can you can probably actually freeze frame this and scan it. If you want more info on this product? But that's basically the acid you want. It's going to react. It is extremely caught, um, noxious, so that's why we have um, some of these safety precautions. The number one safety precaution, I guess you could say, is have baking soda on hand. This will neutralize the acid when you dump it on there. I'll probably put it into a different container so I can get it out quickly in case there's an accident. I guess number two, gloves. When handling the acid, you do not want to get it on any skin whatsoever. I'm wearing long sleeves, but that's just an extra precaution. These two, these gloves are probably five, six dollars at Home Depot or Lowe's. Uh, look at the back and make sure, ask someone, make sure they're acid resistant. They have a little chart on the back of the package. Number three would be a mask to put over. The fumes are extremely toxic. The next would be eye protection the goggles that I'm going to wear for any splashback. So here are my replacement parts. So we want a new seal here. This is uh, hopefully will be the right size cylinder or um, piston. Uh, this is all treats. Treatland.tv. Um, there was a Labor Day special so I was able to get 20% off. Amazing site. And I'll put up links to all these products on the website. Um, I have a bucket. This is what I'll be doing it over. Uh, so if any acid comes out um, it, it won't eat through the bucket. It's a you know rubber. Uh, I have water on hand. Again, water's not going to do it. If you spill the acid on yourself, it will dilute it. But the really the best mechanism, and I might do this, is pour some of the baking soda into the water as well. But you're gonna you're gonna want to apply the baking soda as soon as possible. So I think I can you see what you you can see here is I have the cylinder in the bucket, and I've taken two of these kind of shop towels and put it in here. My kind of plan of action is to pour the acid into this glass container and then slowly you know, pour it into there and then let it set. It does actually work fast, especially if you're using 100% strength. I'm not diluting this. Now, I'll also post the YouTube videos that I was looking at. Um, that gave suggestions. I want to get this guy soaked too. You can 
see this, there's already. Okay, so I've now set up a box fan. It's been setting for probably, probably five minutes now. I'm actually gonna open it up. The aluminum, aluminum has been that has reacted with the acid. I'm going to try to do this as much so you can see it. It's actually really tricky. I want to do it right. I want to do it quickly. I'm going to go to the Q-tip kind of technique now. So we're on about round two. Uh, and the Q-tip works as well. See there. Just kind of clean it off around the edges. This technique with the paper towel seems to work really, really well bring you up to speed where we're at now. I did, uh, I don't know, probably five different stages of putting in the paper towel, adding the uh, acid, and letting it set for five to ten minutes, and then coming back. And what I've done is, I have a diluted solution, which I've just sprayed over it, um, the entire thing uh, to remove anything maybe left over and just get another uh, just be overly cautious so I've also seen blogs and videos where people use the acid to clean their bikes some people say it's a bad idea but whatever so this is the head I sprayed it with a diluted solution and these bolts I'm letting them sit in there for a while, and I'm going to spray them off with a combination of degreaser and baking soda, which I'll probably spray this guy with. And uh, I'll wash it all down with water, and you can see there's still some like discoloration. Now, I don't know if it, that's actually etched in the cylinder. And be very careful, as you can see, I've added a box fan because... It is strong, man. I'm wearing the mask now. These are the gloves. I just kind of kept like a section that was baking soda and always, you know, like coated the gloves before I tried to remove them so I didn't get any on my hands. Okay, so I've taken it out of the acid bath, uh, put baking soda, washed it with water. This had a lot of buildup of the, you know, I don't know, carbon or exhaust or whatever it is um, on here so what I use is a Dremel and I have this little soft attachment that doesn't score it it just kind of like buffs it almost and it removes that black off of it you can see there's still could be aluminum that's mashed on there Okay, I've moved on to, there was still a little what it could be aluminum left inside the cylinder. You can feel it with your finger. Um, I, rather than bring out all the acid and everything again, which is such a chore, and you got to put on the gloves and blah, 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 and the mask, um, I'm just using this uh, 600 grit sandpaper and adding a little water to it. I'm just taking these small um, amounts of it and just rubbing it on the inside. And you can see 
We got a nice shine going. You want to go. I've been going with the direction that the piston will go. Um, as you can see, there's still like right down in here. In, oh, it's actually pretty smooth. But in here, I'll probably touch up um, that that still is not meeting my level of satisfaction. And then, now we're at the stage where I'm putting the new pis replacement piston head in. Excuse me, piston. And uh, obviously this is the old one. Uh, I believe that last bit I was trying to get off the cylinder wasn't aluminum because I actually did just take a Q-tip and put some gloves on and try to see if I could smear that off and it didn't work. So I just went back to the sandpaper. Um, you know, it's a 600 grit. I wet it and just went over the spot until I felt comfortable with it. Um, this is the new piston. Obviously, it's not connected to the crank, but I just wanted to make sure it fit and it's in there. It's got a pretty, pretty solid seal. Um, see in there. The arrow points to the exhaust. So, this old one, it's basically, the exhaust is up right in its current position, so you can see that's where the majority of the 